Welcome everybody to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the sciences. Evolutionary leftovers. I found a pretty cool article. Every once in a while I'll do deep dives into things, evolutionary biology. This was pretty funny because it's, uh, okay, so it's from Big Think. It's your body's full of stuff you no longer need. Here's a list. Evolution Doesn't Clean Up After Itself Very Well by Bobby Berman. It's from the Big Think. I'll put the link in the description to the article. I believe there's also a button to listen to the article. So you might even get better people speaking than me. And the reason why I picked this one out is I have a bunch of them that I have highlighted to do podcasts on. This one was started on a Twitter feed, basically, with an anthropologist putting out some interesting facts about leftover evolutionary stuff and i get this sense and i just don't agree with this feeling that people keep calling facebook toxic and twitter toxic and i, I think it's you bring it what you want to it and there's no denying that there's so much good stuff out there evolution psychology science breakthroughs uh, good natured stories funny dog videos you don't have to call it toxic. It's not toxic on its own. In any case, this was a fun banter between an anthropologist on Twitter, and uh, this was turned into an article, so I'll start reading it. Normally, I'll read it word for word, and sometimes I'll stop and inject a saying or two, or, you know, just something that occurs to me. All right. One of the points is, an evolutionary biologist got people swapping ideas about our lingering vestigia. Basically, this is stuff that serves some evolutionary purpose at some point, but now is kind of, well, extra. Here are the six traits that inaugurated the fun. Evolutionary anthropologist and Boston College postdoc Dorsa Amir started the whole thing with a series of eight tweets. And boy, did she start something fun. Amir laid out a list of weird, once useful details of the human anatomy that we continue to carry around with us and on us. Basically, this is the stuff that serves some evolutionary purpose at some point, but is now extra. Natural selection, after all, has no reason to clear away unnecessary traits if they pose no evolutionary disadvantage. And when we say, started the whole thing, what we mean is that this being Twitter, some arguing was inevitable. Some people took issue with Amir's use of the word vestigial. One issue with the word is that early traits may still be beneficial in ways we do not know yet. The microbiome managing apex and the, in, and the immune system's tonsils were both considered among these for some time. A trait stated assumed value was also always just our best guess. So a certain amount of uncertainty is understood to be baked in. It's important to remember, too, that if a mutation just happened to happen and persisted because it was useful, it's not the same thing as saying it has no, oh, it has a reason to exist. The reason was randomness, unless one doesn't believe in evolution. Which gets us to the second type of argument Amir's post generated. Some creationist intelligent design believers seem to be patrolling Twitter to shout down references to science where it arises. Probably this post will also get them going. Amir has nonetheless started a list and a conversation that is totally worth checking out. Hair splitting aside, here are the six traits that inaugurated the fun. And by the way, see what I mean by toxic on Twitter? Anthropologists putting things on Twitter. But then you get idiots. You get just on uh, people who just don't have the knowledge about it, but then you have creationists and people don't believe in evolution. But there is a uncertainty to certain things, and that's fine. But this whole, you know, I, this is what I think Twitter is for, and Facebook, and the groups you can join, and what you put in, what you take out. This is um, excellent, in my opinion. So keep it up. We'll start with one. Toplica semilunaris. Okay, this has to do with the eye. At the corner of our eyes, closest to the nasal ridge, is that little pink thing. 
which is probably what most of us call it, called the Karunkula. Karunkula. All right, I guess so. Karunsula. Next to it is the Plica Seminuluminars. <laughs> Seminuluminars. And it's what left of a third eyelid that used to, ready for this, blink horizontally. It's supposed to have offered protection for our eyes. And some birds, reptiles, and fish have such a thing. That's fucking nuts. I don't know how I'm pronouncing these things. Plica semi lunares. All right. It's that little pink thing in the corner of your eye. And it used to go horizontal close. And that boggles the mind. I just crazy stuff. I love it. Next one is Palmaris longus. We don't have much need these days, at least most of us, to navigate from tree branch to tree branch. Still, about 86% of us still have the wrist muscle that used to help us do it. To see if you have it, place the back of your hand on a flat surface and touch your thumb to your pinky. If you have a muscle that becomes visible in your wrist, that's the palmaris longus. If you don't, consider yourself more evolved. Just joking. That's the article. People are so fucking triggered these days. All right, so, hey, you know, we used to have a muscle that helps us go from tree to tree. Incredible. Darwin's tubercle. Hmm. Yes, maybe the shell of your ear does feel like a weird dried apricot. Maybe not. There's a ridge in that swirly structure that's a muscle which allowed us at one point to move our ears in the direction of interesting sounds. These days we just turn our heads, but there it is. That's to me that's incredible. You know, we'd have I have I don't know what age I was, um uh, let's say early teens, whatever. And I'm able to twitch and move my left ear. I can kind of wobble it around. And, I can't do it to my right ear, and I've tried, and even with all my meditation and stuff. I wonder if it's something like this, but the thought of being able to move our ears, you know, just to figure out where sounds are coming from, it just blows my mind. Next one is goosebumps. Well, we all know that. It's not entirely clear what purpose made goosebumps worth retaining evolutionary, evolutionarily, but there are two circumstances in which they appear. Fear and cold. For fear, they may have been a way of making body hair stand up so we'd appear larger to predators, much the way a cat's tail puffs up. Numerous creatures exaggerate their size when threatened. In the cold, they may have trapped additional heat for warmth. That's interesting. I don't get goosebumps much. I don't know if I've ever had. I wonder if that means I'm more evolved. <clears throat> Next one is tailbone. Well, we all know this one, right? Way back, we had tails that probably helped us balance upright and was useful moving through trees. We still have the stump of one when we're embryos from four to six weeks. And then the body mostly dissolves it during weeks six to eight. What's left is a coccyx. Oh, what the fuck that? Uh, coccyx. Coccyx. We've all heard about this, and I think this is one of the first things uh, you remember from school, I think. It's just something that always goes way back. The Palma Grasp Reflex. You've probably seen how non-human primate babies grab onto their parents' hands to be carried around. We used to do this, too. So still, if you touch your finger to a baby's palm, or if you touch the sole of their foot, Palmer grasp reflex will cause the hand or foot to try and close around your finger. That's, in, that's incredible. You know, we see that all the time. And we now know it's called the Palmer grasp reflex. <laughs> so these are six things that the uh, anthropologist was uh, engaging Twitter in. And then I like this article also because it goes into some of the um, suggestions. Uh, fangs, <laughs> lower mouth plate behind your teeth, some have protruding bone under the skin, which is a throwback to large fangs. 
almost like an upside down saber tooth. <laughs> uh, hiccups. Oh, something here is an article linking to tadpoles take blame for human hiccups. <laughs> uh, uh, an evolutionary throwback to our gill breathing ancestors. That's insane. Hypnotic jerk as you fall asleep. What about when you jump as if you're drifting off to sleep? I heard that was a reflex to prevent falling from heights. Hmm. This thing often called the alpha jerk as you drop into alpha sleep is properly called the hypnic jerk. It may actually be a carryover from our arboreal days. The hypothesis is that you suddenly jerk awake to avoid falling out of your tree. <laughs> Nail screeching on a blackboard. Everyone hates the sound of this buzz. It's speculated that this is a residual wiring in our head because the sound is similar to the shrill warning call of a chimp. Okay. Ear hair. Ear hair. <laughs> okay, what is hair in the ears for? I think it's because as we got older, it filters out the BS. Ha ha ha, get it? <clears throat> nervous laughter. Perhaps nervous laughter is an example, some leftover primal way to make an impression on distress. You may be hard to something. Tooth bearing with the jaw clenched is generally recognized as a signal of submission or non-threatening in primates. The voluntarily smiling or laughing in tense situations might have signaled that you weren't a threat. That's funny. Um, what is this? Sometimes it feels like my big toe should be on the other side of my foot. <laughs> And it's just, you know, I get a kick out of this stuff. And it says at the bottom, Twitter should always be so much, so fun, so much fun. And I agree. I think it's ridiculous. I go on, and yes, when I want to be an asshole, when I had to be, or I felt I needed to be, I was, or am. I, to a certain extent, don't tolerate bullshit. But when you look at my feed, or well, the stuff I post, it's always a mixture of science, Good nature stories, maybe some funny dog pics and things like that. And I'm always interested in uh, things about neuroscience and in the mind. I don't look for the engagement of um, uh, religious things and, and so on and so forth, which I'll be labeled as. But it looks like there is a problem with the person who's saying these things. Oh, this is toxic. Or this, You know what? Work through it. It's a, it's a you thing. In my opinion, I would rather have a pack of cigarettes sitting in front of me when I'm trying to quit smoking and work through it with meditation, breathing exercises, understanding what's going on with me, what the addiction is, what the impulses are, rather than throwing, uh, never going near cigarettes again and hoping I can quit cold turkey. And in the same case like this, I see it more as Understand yourself. Why are these things triggering? Why do you consider uh, Twitter toxic and Facebook and Instagram or whatever it is? These days, what is it? TikTok is popular. It's something you need to examine yourself. You need to work on these things with breathing and meditation exercises that um, more uh, absorb, rechannel, transmute these feelings and thoughts. The way your body responds. If we can do this as a foundation from in kids of babies, I think the world would be greatly improved. Saying that, this is an article about evolutionary leftovers and what the body has that it still keeps around as extra. And in the subtext, and a little bit of a side, is the fact that it was put on Twitter and it was a fun engagement for people. People putting in Certain things, and it even says the arguments that were some legit, just natural uh, curiosity, and there was some, you know, really, uh, you know, ignorant type dogma that gets pushed on anything that has to do with evolution and what our bodies, you know, uh, what is it, intelligent design stuff. And when you look at the history of that stuff, and you go into in depth. Uh, deep dives and look at YouTube and do your own searches. It's embarrassing 
hell these debates are set up it's a nonsense show where they just spew bullshit about intelligent design oh i know when i see a rock or, or i see a watch it's put together it's all dumb bullshit that's easily conveyed to an audience who just doesn't care or doesn't want to know more you know everybody can believe anything even the smartest people can be convinced of bullshit so in summing up this podcast it's something i love doing evolutionary biology is uh very interesting to me the way we have things in our body that are left over is just a um you know it's amazing to me to look into and what we're still carrying around are we still evolving do we get oh what mutations are good or bad it's just something to really look into and the uh, other side of this is the labeling of things as toxic like social media stuff yeah i get it it can be uh, a toxic area and there's toxicity out there but it's up to you it's up to you to clean that system you have out to let it go know that you're in control of what you see what you find what you find interesting and the things that you can't control that come across you have to know how to instinctively naturally let your body and mind deal with it in a way where you're not running away from situations and um, new technology that's really can be beautiful and it's people like that who make it worse in my opinion you got to stick around. You got to make sure the truth is important, that it's more than just feelings. And yes, sometimes you can handle it better or handle it worse, but this is evolution. This is things that you got lots of evidence for. And I'm talking millions and millions of little connected facts that correlate into this theory. Not, oh, we have a fucking book that was made by peasants 3,000 years ago. And it's been translated and reiterated. And now that we look back, we can see all the bullshit of religion and all that stuff. But no, it's intelligent design. Is a you know, there's always a fallback position. Is the god of the gaps. And in saying that, I hope everybody enjoys these podcasts. Like, subscribe, do the fucking normal bullshit that people tell you to do. I hope to see everybody soon. Be well, everybody. Take care.